This episode of Digital Photography Cafe is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera, and by Daisy Grip, for a child's smile for a photographer's camera. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe. I'm Trevor Current, your digital marketing guy. And I'm Joseph Christina, your professional photographer. So grab a latte, pull up a chair, and join us as we chat about the art and business of photography. So hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Last week we talked about Mac Mall's studio makeover contest, the new Canon EOS M mirrorless camera, and discussed shiny new objects. If you haven't listened to last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it on iTunes, listen in your car through Stitcher Radio, or simply head over to the website, digitalphotographycafe.com, and listen online. So, Joe, we are back. Episode 65. We are here and doing it. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh. So, um, we got some interesting news for yes, everyone this week, right? Yes, we do. Very some, interesting. Some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. So we mm-hmm. have, you know, we kind of hinted about it uh, last week. Right. But now we're in a position we can talk about it a little bit more. Um, so we have our own app coming to a big screen TV near you. Well, maybe not necessarily Imagine. near you right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But it might not. Yeah. It just depends on what part of the world you're in. Yeah. But yeah. So everyone, we have an application that's in development that should be out in the next, let's say, five to six weeks. And it's going to first start out in 22 countries in Europe. And um, basically, you'll be able to see us on your smart TVs, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've you've always been able to watch us on the big TV, either through YouTube or through iTunes, either with an Apple TV or, or if you have a smart TV that you're able to connect to YouTube, one of those applications. I mean, you've always been able to do that. Right. But now it's going to be actually our own app as part of the app menu structure on right. uh, some big TVs and set-top boxes from like Sharp, um, uh, Hitachi, um, TCL is another one. Um, I right. haven't heard of that over here, but I know that's pretty big in Europe. Yeah, it's monster And over there. Uh, also Ikea, which is kind yeah. of odd, but Ikea yeah. actually has their own TV, which is yeah, kind of yeah. We, cool. I think we talked about that a few weeks back. I don't know. I think uh, Ikea has a... Um, I guess it's like a built-in TV to like this whole unit thing. So they sell you the TV and the wall unit. It's like all one big structure. But anyway, so. Yeah, I clicked on the uh, this link. Yeah, it's kind of like a floor standing unit. It's kind of almost like, as if it were a TV, like tabletop type of Right, thing. right, right. And, and it's, it's got like one a piece. DVR or DVD player and stuff like mm-hmm. built into it, you know, and, and right, the TV's right. connected to it on like a stand and stuff. It's pretty neat. It's, yeah, it's real, like a you know, media it's real IKEA design, you know, very very uh, right. kind of minimalistic, kind of yeah, uh, contemporary simplistic. design. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, love it, love so, it. And we're working with uh, a bunch of other media partners, actually, to extend our reach, similar to what we're doing on uh, with this network. And, uh, you know, when more information becomes available, we'll let you guys know about it. We're going to share it. I tell we you what, this is exciting. It. I mean, so basically you'll be able to see the little um, Digital Photography Cafe icon that you would see on iTunes, let's yep. say, that says video like stamped on it. Yep. And that's our icon. That's, uh, that's where you'll it. be able to 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 hear us. I think what Just, do we have like 66 shows, I think, including the intro that will be that are in there so far. So. Yeah, Anyways. exactly. And then on the big TV, you'll be able to watch the the HD, you know, video feed of the show, which will be right, which will be great. I mean, it'll look yeah. fantastic. I mean, it looks really good on the big TVs. I'm, yeah. you know, if anybody, you know, hasn't watched the show, um, we've we kind of developed this kind of a neat cafe type of setting, and there's a newspaper on the table and stuff, and the text on that newspaper is razor sharp on an HD TV. It looks it yeah. looks great. It's really nice. Yeah. So. yeah. so, of course, right now we're in the Olympics. So Woo-hoo. right now yeah. we're, you know, it's Olympic time happens every four years. And what happens? No one gets work done. And that's that includes right. me. So, you know, I'm, you know, rooting for for USA and watching all the, you know, the swimming to track to, you know, the whole nine yards. There's really some cool stuff that's been going on. I mean, just, the, you know fastest man on earth ran to you know um someone that was a gold medalist in the paralympics are running with uh all of the abled 
um, guys. That yeah, that guy's just, amazing. I that's saw a clip just on amazing. TV last night about him. That's just um, unbelievable. God, that's you have Michael Phelps. That's won you know more gold than anyone in history. I mean, just like just on and on. This has been a very eventful um, and interesting. Um, it's 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 very it it's captive. I would say. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck it's really on there. Cool. You know? our, our you know the U.S. Uh, gymnastic women's team is doing really great. Right. And you know, I mean, you know, not to slay any of our uh, worldwide listeners. I mean, the other sure. countries are doing fantastic as well. China is right. kicking butt too, in a yeah, lot of events. Absolutely, um, and and Great Britain is that you know they had like their best day a couple of days ago. I think it was six gold in a day or something. Yeah. So it's been really great. I, I it's good I always for everybody. Enjoy. I mean, this really I, is I, amazing. It motivates people to get healthy. It motivates people to root for their country. You know patriotic you know stuff so yep. but anyways you know in, in looking at this um while while we're speaking in the background here you'll see that we have if you're watching and not listening you'll see that we have a bunch of pictures rolling and these are all like the top pictures so far um sent in to photo shelter from photo shelter me uh, members and some of these pictures are absolutely amazing the first picture that that rolled up was the um was a it looks like an hdr of all the explosions over over the yeah, there like was the just, fireworks or in the, uh, it looks like the opening ceremonies and stuff. Incredible. The yeah. colors and just everything. It's just beautiful. And there's so many great shots in here. I mean, if you're looking and you're kind of, uh, if you're watching, you look at some of these and it's like, God, you know, they had to be very close or they had to have a torpedo. Yeah, a big long you know, lens. <laughs> on the front of, uh, of their lens. And, you know. Talking about torpedoes, right? We uh, we got um, uh, another news topic besides this. The the photo shelter was Canon's gear room. They they showed the inside of Canon's gear room where they have like you know stacks of cameras, stacks of lenses, and stacks of you know extenders and oh, anything that sick. you. This is sick. I mean, the do you see? There's got to be millions of dollars in equipment in this room on these shelves. I mean, you've got all these white torpedo lenses lined up they're like you know five ten thousand dollar lenses I each mean, each yeah yeah each and they're and just they're sitting like on a three shelf and like four ready deep. to be used it's just God. it's nuts it's nuts. it's amazing i mean some of these i mean some of this it looks like you know you know f2 um you know 800 millimeter i mean they, they look yeah. like you know telescopes you know yeah. so absolutely amazing it's kind of interesting to be able to see this stuff and just and you can see the stuff that's still wrapped um, from Canon, you know, as they have this certain way of wrapping it. Right. Um, and right. then the other stuff that's open that's already been used. And you see five D's like just body after body, body after, after body, body after yeah. body. I, and just, I tell you, the Olympics, though, I mean, for a sports photographer, this has got to be like an ultimate dream. Yeah. You know, I mean, to have so many different activities going on, you know, as such professionals, too. So you can right. kind of count on results. You know, like if you know the sport, if you know gymnastics and you know uh, the routines that they're doing and you kind of are knowing what to look for, you can right. time your shots and get some amazing, amazing shots. I mean, that that photo shelter uh, reel that we were showing with all those different images. I mean, there's right. some amazing, you know, gymnastic shots, you know, just midair captures. Um, I know there's one of Michael Phelps too swimming and he's doing right. breaststroke and he's coming up out of the water and the water is just flying. It's just hanging there. It's just hanging there. It's frozen in time and talk about razor sharp. I mean, you can read his name on the side of his cap, like crystal clear. I mean, it's yeah. razor sharp. I mean, it's just, you know, and then everything else just blurs into yeah. this beautiful, creamy, creamy, yeah. um, you know, focus. So, I don't know. It's it's really great. I, I you know I love this stuff. This is you know action stuff, movement. You know, gra you know being able yeah. to capture the movement. That's why they have these this fast glasses they do, and that's why they have to be torpedoes because they're not you know uh, f you know five six you know f seven one or something. They're like you know f one two f one yep. four f two o. And um, the thing is, too, is a lot of these, you know, for example, like an 800, um, they'll go and strap on like a 2X extender on that. Yeah, and now you're you're dropping, you know, a lot of light. Let's put it that way. It's like, you know, yeah. you're losing a lot of lights. So now, you know, you have the equivalent of let's say it's a 2.0. Now, all of a sudden it's up to like four, so, you know, four, five, five, six or so. Right. So um, you have to have these monster torpedoes. So really cool. Love it. 
Um, great stuff about the Olympics. I just thought that, you know, we had to share something about it because this has just been, it's just been a lot of good times and a, and a lot of uh, good wasted time. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's history. It's history. It's it's something right. that everyone should be watching, at least part of it, just to kind of get a sense of what's happening in the world right. as far as, you know, this goes and the history behind it. And from a photography standpoint, I mean, again, just amazing stuff coming out of out of the Olympics. It's absolutely it's awesome. Wish so I was I try there. Oh, no, I know, I know. So anyways, before we go any further, let's go ahead and hear from one of our sponsors. Have you ever tried to photograph a child who was on the move and wouldn't settle down? A child who just wouldn't give your camera the time of day no matter what tricks you tried? If so, we have some great news for you. Introducing the Daisy Grip, your go-to tool for capturing a child's smile. Just think of the Daisy Grip as your third hand. Just place it into your camera's hot shoe Insert the child's favorite toy or puppet and let the smiles begin. Imagine the storytelling magic that you'll have at your disposal with a ferocious lion or a friendly monster sitting on top of your camera. For the ultimate attention getter, place your smartphone into the Daisy Grip and play the child's favorite cartoon. With the addition of a Daisy Grip bracket, you can free up your hot shoe for a flash or a wireless transmitter. Let Daisy Grip put the space above your lens to work for you. Make this indispensable tool your new best friend. Head over to daisygrip.com forward slash DPC to get the listener discount. The Daisy Grip. For a child's smile, for a photographer's camera. So, all right, guys, we are back. So, you know, we're going to let me let's give you a couple of news items that uh, came through um, the wire this week that were really kind of interesting. Um you know, there, there's there's a bunch of stuff about uh, these ILC cameras, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and there, you know, we talked about the Canon version last night, the e, or uh, right. last week, the EOS M. You know, these mirrorless interchangeable cameras. And right. uh, as it turns out, that looks like it's starting to become a bigger part of Sony's business um, yeah. because they've reported a big this- loss. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as it turns out, where they're making their money is on these mirrorless cameras. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they were the article showed. I think it was like a hundred and no, three hundred and sixteen million dollar uh, loss uh, for the quarter, which comes to what is it like twenty four point six billion yen. yen? I don't know, whatever that. So anyway, just think about you know three hundred and sixteen million dollar loss, which is amazing, but. The, the main thing that's making money for them is that Sony Alpha, the NEX5, um, and yeah. so that well, goes we back talked to about our that topic. Last week about, yeah. you know, are the mirrorless cameras going to be the way of the future? And is, you know, the DSLR right. technology, the mirror technology, is, is that really on its way out? I would say not within the next year, but these platforms that these companies are building you know, of course, they're always going to introduce the new technology in the consumer market first Absolutely. because that's where they're going to sell the most of them. They can keep their production costs down as this technology develops and and builds and everything. They're going to be able to apply, you know, the pro version of these technologies into a better body. You know, right. like right now, that Canon um, camera that we talked about with an adapter, you can hook EF lenses on it. Sure. Well, I mean, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Well, you know, I mean, what's to say they can't just make another mirrorless body, pull it, put a full frame sensor in it instead of an APS-C and have an EF mount right on it instead right. of needing an adapter. Now you've got an amazing uh, little body. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they always push them out to the consumer base first. And, sure. um, you know, I look at it as, you know, free beta testers um <laughs> beta right. testers that are, <laughs> that are that's testing. right let the consumers work out the bugs <laughs> you know, before the pros because they're gonna be like oh right. this doesn't work this and we're like okay we'll go ahead and fix that yeah that guy you know that set of a thousand people on that blog they're right that thing doesn't work so right. um right. it's great because yeah like just like you said then they'll push the stuff that does work and the fixes and the repairs into the pro line um, you know, the exact opposite to someone like Microsoft, which they'll go and they'll use all of us, professional yeah, and yeah. Uh, consumer, to beta test their junk. Yeah. But that's another story. Equal um, opportunity but, beta testers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> worldwide beta testers. So, yeah. um, but, you know, at least this is a, a real nice way for them to do it. They're, they're getting paid for it. They can lower the cost on the consumer-based stuff as they know they're going to make up on it. 
yep. um, on the professional side as soon as they go live with all of this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, last week, you know, I, I was thinking like how many how many of these companies now are actually doing these um, ILCs, these interchangeable lens um, cameras. So I was looking on here and I kind of did some research. Now, check this out. We got for that, that are actually making these. You got Nikon, Canon, Fuji, Leica. You got Pantex, Pan, Panasonic, Olympus, and you have Samsung. These, these are all companies doing these interchangeable lens cameras, these mirrorless cameras. Think about yep. that. Yep. That is everyone but who? Yeah. But Sigma. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Sigma, Sigma says that they will never make a mirrorless camera. Can you imagine that? So that, yeah, so the article comes out saying Sigma has a change of heart, you know, won't ever produce its own mirrorless, you know, ILC. ILC. Yeah. Are you for real? Yeah. Do you not see what's going on? Do you not see Sony's the only, you know, they're only making money um, this quarter basically on this mirrorless stuff? Why would you do that? So yeah. it, it's kind of odd. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, you know, there's got to be something behind. Obviously they make good lenses. They do well, a lot, you know, yeah. they do. That's it. I mean, they've got a line of quality lenses. Why not sure. make an ILC that will fit them? Right. You know, maybe they'll just concentrate on the DSLR, you know, and they'll be like the only, you know, game in the in town, you know, still holding the DSLR, the standard, the quote unquote mirrored DSLR, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, out there. So, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of odd. Right? Yeah, it is. It is a little odd. Yeah, it is a little right. odd. But anyway, so, you know, there was one other story that came through and this was, you know, I really loved when we were when we were at the show um, uh, last year, I think it was uh, yeah, WPPI, WPPI. Yep. we saw that X100, that Fuji. Yes, that was just just a cool camera. Yep. And, you know, we just found out that they discontinued it. And uh, it seems that they're going to be introducing the X200 um, at Photokina this year. Right, which, which is actually I think pretty is only big. in a few weeks, right? Yeah, so not too far away. So um, that's kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, that is. I mean, it, it's again this this camera technology is really cool. I think it's definitely something that we need to be on top of. You know, just like the early days of DSLRs. You know, there, it, it was a lot of time before people, the pros, before they gave in to digital. Right. Um, and I think it's going to be the same thing here. But we definitely need to stay on top of it. We know we're not going back to film. Uh, that, that yeah. we, we know we're nah. staying in the digital realm yeah. um, for professional use. And, you know, this could be the next evolution of, of uh, digital. So, especially in vi especially on the video side, because we absolutely. discussed last week how amazing that uh, this mirrorless technology is going to be for the videographers out there, for right. the, uh, you know, the movie makers. So... But anyways, um, you know, when I was going through some of these articles, there's one article that kind of stuck in my mind. It kind of made me think a little bit. Um, it really didn't have to do with what I was thinking, but it kind of indirectly did. And it basically speaks about um, the paradox of choice. And right. um, it's really, really interesting. And it gets me thinking about, you know, our offerings and, you know, everyone out there that's listening, their offerings and how they offer their their um, their different packages and their work. Um, um, and it's what's what's kind of interesting here is, you know, normally in our mind, we say, you know, we need to give a ton of choices, right? Um, we need to, you know, provide people with everything that they can possibly ever want. And, you know, after reading some of these stats, you know, come to find out that's not really the answer. Right. Um, you right. Know, well, that's it. It's kind of the paralysis by analysis. I mean, if exactly. there's too much to look at, there's too much, too many options. Um, people are kind of like, oh, I, I don't know what to get, so I won't get anything. Right. Or and I'll just get this because that's what I can afford. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what the statistics are exactly saying. Just what you're just like what you said now. Right. So so here it is. So a classic experiment. Here we go. Right. So shoppers offer 24 different jams like jellies right right they are they were offered 24 to taste they only bought three percent of the time after tasting all of them they only made the purchase three percent of the time that's like nothing right but now when they offered the same shoppers shoppers only six jams to taste right they offered shoppers six jams yep they bought 30 percent of the time think about that 
Right. You give you get you're giving them 24 different jams. They taste just what you said. You know, you you can't think. It's it's you know, it's that paralysis. Right. You know, it's that that paradox of choice. It's the idea of, you know, there's so much in front of you, you can't see the trees for the woods, you know. <laughs> yeah, kind of no, that, that's that's right. And and you're right. This applies to preparing um shooting packages like wedding packages as well as the additional products that you offer. Rather right. than saying I've got everything, you know, from coffee mugs to canvas prints to hats and t-shirts, all that stuff. Right. You know, if you've been in business for any length of time, or even if you're just starting out, you have your few stables. You know, you have your your photo album, you know, your wedding album. You have maybe, you know, the fancy one. And then right. you have more of a basic one. Of course, you have prints. What are the what are the normal print sizes? You know, five by seven, four by six, eight by tens. You know, so you want to have those available for them. But as far as all these other products and stuff go, you know, hook up with a vendor to supply them for you. Right. But maybe you put on your price list or on your website, other products are available. Exactly. You know, exactly. Novelty, you know, novelty items available, you know. Right. Uh, or whatever. So, yeah. So let's say if you're doing a wedding, you know, so let's say there's wedding photographers out there. Instead of offering like five or six or eight different wedding packages, maybe you offer three. Right. You know, um, instead of in those wedding packages having this whole big, long laundry list of what comes in it, um, maybe you simplify it and make yeah. it straight to the point and only show what they really want. What is the what does the bride really want? The rest right. of the stuff you just basically say, yeah, we offer it um, and you can add it in. Number one, the one thing that it does that it will help out is it'll be it'll help you lower your price of these packages because you're That's not right. offering soup to nuts. Um, you know, maybe you're only offering nuts and that might be you. Right. But, no, but either way. So, um, you know, the idea is you really just want to kind of consolidate and and make it and give them what they want and nothing more. Because if you start ending up with all of this stuff, they don't know what to choose anymore. And then they'll go on to the next guy that has this real simple, pla you know, package that says, I will do this and that's it. And it's right. this price. They're like, OK, that sounds great. Done. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, again, it's the whole paralysis thing. Too many options, too many things to think about, um, too much to compare to another photographer. Um, you know, really, I mean, my feeling is here exactly. that you should make your money on the shooting and you make your kind of like your bonus money on your products. Right. Especially in the beginning. If you're an emerging pro, you're kind of just starting out. You want you need to make your money on your shooting. You need to pay for your time. You need to get paid fairly for your time. The products that you sell after the fact are great. And look at that as gravy until you have enough experience and enough sales behind you that you can say, all right, you know, I've this is pretty much everybody buys an album. So, you know, maybe I'll put an album, I'll mark my prices up a little bit, I'll include an album because we right. know that that's, that's what they'll sell. Or maybe you don't include it, you keep it as, as an extra option, but now that you've been selling them on a regular basis, now maybe you can start figuring that into your, your overall income to your business. Absolutely. You know, but in the beginning, you really gotta figure you know, just the cost of your shoots as how you're gonna pay your bills. Yeah, and I, you know, I see a lot of photographers too, that what they'll do is like perfect examples with the album. Instead of just saying, okay, you're gonna get this you know, leather album, with, um, you know, uh, 10 spreads, 20 pages, right? whatever. Um, no, they go into, you know, we have leather and we have, uh, you know, we have whatever. They go on and on with all of this stuff, all different covers and finishes and, and you know, uh, different leafing. And the, the bottom line is, is you don't you don't need to say all that. Just no. tell them the basics. They can call you for, for more. Just don't give them too much that they go on to the next guy that just gives them exactly what they want. Back right. To the, yeah. Right. So, yeah, exactly. You're better off saying maybe a little bit less in details of the product and maybe exactly. gearing it as your high end album, your middle of the road album and your budget album or something like that. Right. Um, and give them less details about it and let them talk to you about it. You know, go over the details with them on phone, on the phone or in person or what have right. you. Um, yeah, that way they just don't get overwhelmed. So I, I think that's a great study and that applies to all types of businesses. 
um, yeah. you know, from selling widgets to services. So, yeah. um, you know, it's definitely something to for everybody to keep in mind. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, the next thing we're going to talk about is well, how to make some money because that's what we all need to do. <laughs> but, like but anyways, before we go on to that, let's go ahead and hear from one of our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer, and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. All right, so we talk on the show a lot about digital marketing and social media techniques you know, to how you can use them to make money, how you can use them to, to reach new audiences. And those are really right. a great free or low cost solution to build your audience. Um, you know, traditional marketing still work and they should always be used. You should always look into whatever your budget can afford. Right. Um, but, you know, they're, they're local networking, whether it be with end consumers or with whether it be with business groups, is still a huge source of opportunity absolutely you know we've we've talked about networking a lot on the show and we've talked about getting involved with your chamber of commerce and the chamber of commerce really is a great area to go and uh i saw a post on marketingprofs.com this week um mm. and it's called uh five ways to turn your chamber of commerce membership into sales and it really was a good article and i kind of wanted to share some of the tips that they gave with with you guys because it really does pertain and it's not just business to business stuff it is business to consumer stuff so if you if you're not a pro photographer out there shooting for other businesses commercial work if you are doing weddings and stuff that's right. okay because there are still lots of opportunity to get involved here yeah and and bear in mind too we're you know you're, you're discussing the chamber but remember there's so many other networks that are out there in your local area. Yep. And for most photographers that do not travel worldwide shooting professionally, their local market is the one that's going to be their bread and butter. That's where they're going to make their money. That's how they're going to pay their electric bill every month. So right. there is plenty of other networks, but I, I guess they're highlighting the chamber as one of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's groups like BNI. Um, there's sure. other there's other business networking groups, but most most counties um, will have some type of business organization, and right. that's definitely where you want to start first. Um, usually, the fees could be a little bit more reasonable because it is a county organization as opposed to a private organization. Right. Um, and there always is a fee involved to be a member, but the member benefits are really good. Um, we talked about them in a previous show, and we'll put a link to that show maybe in the show notes so you can take a look. Um, right. But uh, so some of the tips, like the first tip they give is get on the Chamber's website. So <laughs> the Chamber has a central website for the county or for the regional area, and it's designed for people, let's say, outside of the county and even people inside of the county that want to learn more about it. So usually as part of your membership, they will give you some space on the server, maybe a profile page, or maybe it's more of like a directory listing. A lot of times that's included with your membership. Sometimes there might be a small fee to have to pay for that. Yeah, but, you know, you guys can look at that or think about that as let's say you're traveling to another state and there's a sign that says, you know, for more information, come here and you go there and it's like a little shack that has a ton of little cards and, and little right. brochures for all the different highlights of what's going on in that specific area of their town. You can look at it as the same way. When you get onto their website, you're one of those little ads. You're one of those little cards so that when people come and they're, and they're looking, um, you show up. Basically that. Sure, absolutely. You know, and let's let's go back to the wedding uh, photography example. If you have a bride, if you live in a town that's kind of a destination town, 
and you have somebody coming into town. Um, I know, right. Joe, you you do this all the time, right? People come down to Florida, they want to do a beach wedding or whatever, and they yeah. look for a Florida-based photographer so they don't have to fly them down from maybe where they live. So yeah. this is a great, another opportunity to get found as they're doing their research right. for that that region. And that exactly, that, that exactly what is what happened. Just recently, we shot a wedding with a bride and groom from Italy. They, they flew in and they already had me booked uh, before they even got here. So yeah, that happens all the time. People are, right. they're out there searching these networks for photographers in a specific area that they're getting married or they're, they're, they're coming to. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. So tip number two, let the chamber promote your news. So again, back to the website, the chamber needs content. They need something to put out on their website that's gonna keep people coming back, checking it out, get those Google rankings for original content. Mm -hmm. The chamber right. is happy to promote your news. If you have something special going on with your um, business, not necessarily just a promotion, but maybe you right. just you know, photograph somebody important or you've just done something very unique, something that's newsworthy, share your news with them. They're, most of the time, they're gonna be happy to post it on their website. And if they do give you your own profile page, you can probably even post it there too. Uh, you know, basically kind of like a blog. Right. Um, the other way to, that they'll do it is they'll actually do mailings for you. Now, this is really cool because I know my local chamber, if you print up the postcard or the, the flyer, let's say, they'll actually do the mailing for you. You give them like a stack of a thousand or however many, you know, members that they mail out to. And when they do their monthly mailings to all of the members, they'll actually stuff your flyer in the envelope with everybody else's and it, and it gets sent out to all the members. Right. Um, that's fantastic because A, you don't have to get your own envelopes. You don't have to, you know, mm -hmm. stamp and and put the address labels on them and, and mail it all out. Or even if you're just doing a, a self-mailing postcard, um, right. you know, you don't have to stamp it and put the label on that. So, so that, you know, that would work out good if you are a photographer that shoots, for example, headshots, or if you're doing product shots right. or you are targeting businesses, because at that point, your little yep. ad, your little card is going out to businesses. You're not going to find brides that way, let's say, per se, um, unless they're, you know, with indirectly. The chamber, with the, right. yeah, indirectly, they're with the chamber already. Right. But for the most part, you know, at least, you know, who you're targeting and you can make your uh, materials up um, appropriately. Right. That's that's exactly right. And you know what? That type of commercial work is probably something that all photographers should do as that kind of back burner work that kind, even if you're, you know, a wedding photographer, that's your main thing. Right. You need to have something else going on for the times when you don't have any weddings. You know, your right. weddings are on weekends. What are you doing the rest of the week? Well, you're processing images, you're creating albums, what have you. But that's not going to require 40, 50 hours of your time, you know, um, it's so it's good if you're if you do, you know, want to get involved with shooting headshots for B2B work, uh, doing product photography, doing uh, location photographies, a lot of people want, you know, images of their office buildings, let's say for collateral work that they're producing or for the website, there's a lot of opportunity there. So you really need to be open minded. Um, you know, and maybe try some new, new opportunities. Yeah. It's just, it's just new leads for free. Yes. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's it. Leads for free. And that, that's, that's our, our, our favorite cost, right? Yeah, that's right. We like free. <laughs> <laughs> so tip number three, demonstrate your industry expertise through writing. As I said before, the chamber is constantly looking for new material to put up on their website. So the idea of you being a photographer, you could write about something educational. You know, why professional photography is important to a business. Going back to the headshots, going back to having great product photography. Um, you know, incorporate ideas about branding and design and how photography right. plays into that role. Um, just these types of, of educational type of articles um, will not only get on the website, but very well may be sent out in email news blasts. Um, you know, to the to the members and everything. So it's that's another really great way of promoting yourself within that group into in the community. And and um, and what's even better is by doing this writing and by sharing on a regular basis like this, you're looked at more as the expert in that yep. field um, so that when someone does need uh, someone, let's say a photographer, they're going to come to you first. It's going to be like, well, this guy knows what he's doing. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. You want to talk about, I mean, you don't need to share your tips as far as your lighting gear or yeah, your no. lighting setup there. No. Most people aren't going to care about that. You're not, you're yeah. not talking to other photographers. Right. You're talking to other businesses. Absolutely. Know your audience before you start writing. Know your audience. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, tip number four, talk about your business. So there are lots of opportunities that come up with these um, Chamber of Commerce meetings. They do monthly meetings. A lot of times they do breakfasts or dinners. Um, they have different events. A lot of times they give their members opportunities to get up in front of the group and kind of do a short presentation, you know, let them know about your company. Um, sometimes it's just like 10 minutes. Sometimes they'll, they'll give you the ability to do like a 30 minute presentation, you know, like a, a long form. Right. So, you know, take those opportunities. Don't be afraid to do it. I know a lot of people get uncomfortable getting up in front of a group and talking, but the beauty is they really are your peers. I mean, they're, they are people that you're networking with, but they're potentially people that you're going to be friends with. They've all right. been in the same boat. They've all either taken the opportunity to get up in front of people and were like nervous about it or, or they were so nervous that they never did it. You know, they're all empathetic yeah. here. I mean, they can all, you know, understand what you're going through. So you don't have to be, you know, somebody who's a great speaker like Steve Jobs or, no, or, or somebody like that. Yep. You know, I mean, you can kind of just get up there and put something that, you know, you've got some thought into, put it together and and promote your business because that's what Yeah, it's you know, about. Um, the easiest way to talk with people, I, I would say, is to hide behind a PowerPoint presentation yeah I should, I should write an article about that um but honestly right. you know when you're talking to folks um if you want them to stop looking at you you need to give them something to look at that yes. um they need to see so by simply putting together let's say 10 really nice you know informational slides um can yep. really kind of take the 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 eyes off you and they can you know simply listen to you and what you have to say and they can be looking at the statistics or the information or the beautiful photos or something. Um, That's right. And when you're talking, you know, you don't have to make eye contact with every little person, every person out in the audience to get all nervous. You know, you look at them kind of as an overview. You look at the screen, you you know, you be animated and move around and people will, yes, they will start not focusing on you and your nervousness, but they're right. going to start focusing on the presentation itself. Yeah. And I, you know what? I like this too, this tip number five, um, you know, host after hour events. That, yes. That's important. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's another great way again, to connect with people. You know, the, every month the chamber will have their meetings, but sometimes it would be really great to have another meeting, maybe a meeting that's focused around your business. So right. if you have studio space, you know, maybe a good size studio. I mean, what better opportunity than have like a little meet and greet, have, you know, some, uh, you know, some, you know, a few cocktails, some hors d'oeuvres, let invite people to come, you know, make it about a business networking opportunity. It's part right. of the, you know, it's, it's an event, you know, and it's not just about you, but exactly. it is about you. You know, it right. is, it's, it's all about you. It's at your studio. It's at your facility. You know, you're the host, you're talking to people, you're presenting, your work is hanging on the walls. Exactly. I mean, this is a great opportunity. And you know what? If you don't have a studio, maybe you work out of the house. Maybe you, if you are a wedding photographer and you're kind of mo mostly going to locations, you know what? A lot of these facilities, you can rent a room for not that much money. Right. You know, and you can go and, ha and put some of your images up on easels, you know, and, and, and or co-sponsor something. Maybe there's another uh, chapter member that has a nice facility. Maybe you co-sponsor. You the two of you together put this thing on. Absolutely. So, well, great information for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of great opportunities there. Definitely look into your chamber of commerce. Don't let the opportunities pass by. Um, your local business is probably where you're going to get most of your business. And what better place to start than people who are open to being promoted to, because that's exactly. what it's all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got some, some pretty interesting news. We're also, we're, we're still at uh, number 15 for our video show on iTunes, which yeah. is great. Yeah, holding steady. That's awesome. Thank you guys for all the wonderful reviews and star ratings and everything that we've been requesting um, from you and you're so graciously providing. That's right. That's right. I mean, and it really helps. 
you know, we're not in the new and noteworthy yet, but it's close, Joe. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. Everybody, please, you know, um, subscribe to the video. Um, definitely leave some five star reviews on the video page. Um, that really, really helps. There'll be a link in the show notes and make it really easy for you to find it. Um, otherwise, you can just go into iTunes and just search Digital Photography Cafe. We'll pop right. right up. And there's an icon there that has a red video stamped right across it. So you can't miss it. We'd really love your support. Um, that definitely helps us out a lot. And you know what? If you're not an iTunes user, um, you can still get the show through RSS. Yep, very easily. So you can watch it on your Zoom or your or your BlackBerry or any other device that will um, pull in an RSS feed. Right. And cool. it, we want to say thank you to um, Ken from HKPhotoWorkshop.com. Um, he gave us a great five-star review oh, yeah. on iTunes. So that that's always fantastic. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's cool. That's cool. You know, we also um, have, a, have a great guy over there. His name is Joe from Keep On Shooting. Dot com. You know, we got to thank him for his kind words and recommendations uh, he gave uh, to us um, on his website. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, Joe. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So if you guys blog about us or write a review on iTunes, definitely let us know. We'd love to give you a shout out on the show and add your information to our friends of the show page. So, Joe, where is the best place for people to connect with you? Well, if you want to find me, the best place is, of course, Twitter. Go over uh, to Twitter and go to at Joseph Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Great, and you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Kern. All right, Trevor, great show as always. Show 65 is in the can. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to discuss on next week's show, send us a message through our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, or you can connect with the show on Twitter at dphotocafe. If you're listening on the go, fear not. Everything that we discussed in this week's show can easily be found in our show notes at our website. Once again, keep your questions and comments coming, and we'll talk to you next week.